disclaimer, all of the content in this video is protected by the Copyright Act of 1976. In the meantime, enjoy the show. On this edition of Sightings... Welcome, my dear cadavers, to the Dr. Creepy YouTube channel, where we delve into the darkest corners of the supernatural and explore the chilling tales that haunt our world. Today, I invite you to prepare yourselves for a journey into what the heck happened to that 90s paranormal show Sightings. phenomenon of sightings, a retrospective analysis of its rise and fall. The 1990s was a decade of significant cultural shifts, technological advancements, and a burgeoning interest in the paranormal. This was the era when the X-Files first aired, when the internet was in its infancy, and when the public's fascination with the unexplained was at an all-time high. Amidst this backdrop, a television show called Sightings emerged, capturing the imagination of viewers across the globe. However, despite its initial success, sightings eventually went off the air. We'll delve into the history of sightings, its cultural impact, and the reasons behind its eventual cancellation. But before we dive into the darkness, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our spine-chilling content. It's a small click for you, but for us, it really means a lot. Sightings was first aired in 1992, produced by Anne Daniel, and Henry Winkler. Hey. Hosted by Tim White. Hello, I'm Tim White. Do you believe in ghosts? Don't answer until you watch this special ghost report from Sightings. The show was a unique blend of news reporting and investigative journalism focusing on paranormal phenomena such as UFO sightings, ghost encounters, and other unexplained events. Each episode was presented in a documentary-style format with interviews, reenactments, and expert analysis. Show's approach was to present the evidence and allow viewers to draw their own conclusions, a strategy that resonated with many. The 1990s was a time when the public's interest in the paranormal was growing. Shows like Unsolved Mysteries and The X-Files had already tapped into this fascination, and Sightings was able to capitalize on this trend. On this special home video edition of Sightings, haunting visions of a strange world between this one and the next. And it came in and it kind of did a little thing in the group, and then it was gone. It was the most extraordinary thing we've ever come across. Sounds that seem to speak from beyond the grave. Please try to give us a message. Please tell me who is here. <laughs> The show's focus on real-life encounters and eyewitness accounts added a layer of authenticity that other shows lacked. This, combined with the show's serious and journalistic approach, made sightings a hit with viewers. Here are some of the top paranormal stories featured on the show. The Heartland like Ghost. I got just a glimpse of that upper window of the face of a little girl, and I don't know who lives here. It's a boy, right? But I saw the face of a little girl in that window. There's a little girl that's standing right there, right at the top of the stairs. Hello? Hello? Look, look. Hello? Can you speak to me, Sally? Is that your name, Sally? story revolved around a family in Kansas who claimed their house was haunted by a ghost named Sally. The family reported physical attacks, strange occurrences, and even captured images of the ghost. This case was so popular that it was later turned into a movie. This was definitely a B-rated movie. I'm not sure if it's any good, I haven't seen it yet. Although it stars the late Miguel Ferreira. The Phoenix Lights? One of the most famous UFO sightings in history. The Phoenix Lights were a series of widely sighted, unidentified flying objects observed in the skies over Arizona, Nevada, and the Mexican state of Sonora on March 13, 1997. The show covered this event extensively. The Allagash Abductions? This episode focused on the story of four men who claimed to have been abducted by aliens during a camping trip in Allagash, Maine in 1976. 
and all past lie detector tests, and their story is one of the most credible abduction cases that rivaled Travis Walton's 1975 incident. According to Wikipedia, one of the most intriguing episodes was Ghost Rider, which aired February 5th, 1993. Have I come across anything like this before? A viewer captures eerie images and bizarre messages on Polaroid film. Is it an entity communicating from beyond? And we asked him his name, and he answered. Our special investigation reveals startling evidence that baffles photographic experts and psychics alike. I can remember this episode scaring the crap out of me when I was just a kid. Of course, that being when this episode first aired. Furthermore, it investigated the case of John Mikowski and John Huckert, two residents of an old house in Los Angeles. Ironically, John Huckert is a movie horror legend in his own right, directing the 1983 cult classics such as The Passing and 1998's Hard. Both his movies are instant cult classics, in addition to his other popular movie directorial works. And oh my god, the man also got to operate on Hollywood action star Eric Roberts in the 2023 film Altered Perceptions. The two said that they appeared to have captured ghostly messages on Polaroid instant film. Peter James works by reading the vibrations he claims to feel when he is in the presence of spirits. I feel that this area here is um, within the bedroom is, is a hot spot. Or perhaps this is where um, the, the individual died. The messages were often cryptic personal or religious and sometimes included drawings or symbols. Some of the messages were also directed to the sightings crew who visited the house to document the phenomenon. The show hired experts to examine the Polaroids and rule out any natural or human explanations. They concluded that the messages were not caused by any known physical or chemical process and that they could not be reproduced by any known method. The show also consulted a psychic investigator who claimed to have contacted other spirits in the house. The world have never seen an entity present itself in that fashion. But I will say that all things are possible and perhaps this is something new that I have never encountered. The case of the ghost writer Polaroid Ghost remains one of the most compelling and controversial examples of paranormal communication ever recorded. If you're interested in more info of this case, I recommend you check out Joe Augustine's book called The Polaroid Ghost and Other True Tales of the Paranormal. The show's focus on real-life encounters and eyewitness accounts added a layer of authenticity that other shows lacked. This, combined with the show's serious and journalistic approach, made sightings a hit with viewers. However, despite its initial success, sightings began to face challenges. One of the main issues was the show's format. While the documentary-style approach was initially a draw, it also limited the show's ability to evolve and adapt. Unlike scripted shows, sightings was reliant on real-life events and eyewitness accounts. This meant that the show was at the mercy of what was happening in the world, and there were times when there simply wasn't enough material to sustain interest. Another challenge was the changing television landscape. The 1990s saw a shift towards more reality-based programming, with shows like Survivor and Big Brother dominating the airwaves. These shows offered a new kind of entertainment, one that was more immediate and interactive. In contrast, sightings with its focus on the unexplained and the unknown seemed out of step with the times. Furthermore, the rise of the internet also played a role in sightings' decline. With the advent of the internet, information about paranormal phenomena became readily available. People could now research and explore these topics on their own, diminishing the need for a television show like sightings. The internet also provided a platform for skeptics and debunkers, who could easily challenge and critique the evidence presented on the show. Finally, sightings faced competition from within its own genre. Other paranormal-themed shows began to emerge, offering different perspectives and approaches. Shows like Ghost Hunters and Paranormal State, for example, focused on the investigative process, taking viewers on the journey with them. These shows offered a more immersive and engaging experience, making sightings seem dated and static in comparison. The advent of the internet and platforms like YouTube have played a significant role in shaping modern paranormal reality shows. Full examples are that of BuzzFeed, Unsolved's haunting investigations of our ghosts real, 
We're sleeping tonight. This week on BuzzFeed Unsolved, we explore one of the most haunted places in the world. At on Wednesday, November 5th, 1975, Travis Walton was working in a seven-man tree. And let's not forget Nuke's Top 5, which is a channel based on viewer submissions. River's Edge. Cambodian Paranormal Investigation Team RC Fun TV2 travels to a while waiting back in the car. Yasuke and Dai Chan also experience something terrifying. These shows have not only gained immense popularity, but have also challenged the dominance of reality shows from the early 2000s. Their unique content and engaging presentation style have managed to captivate audiences, giving traditional reality shows a run for their money. Despite these challenges, sightings continued to air until 1997. However, by this time, the show's ratings had declined significantly, and it was clear that it was no longer sustainable. The decision to cancel sightings was likely a combination of these factors, the changing television landscape, the rise of the internet, competition from other shows, and the limitations of the show's format. In conclusion, sightings was a product of its time, capturing the public's fascination with the paranormal in the 1990s. However, as the decade progressed, the show was unable to adapt to the changing cultural and technological landscape. Despite its initial success, sightings eventually went off the air, a testament to the transient nature of television and the ever-evolving tastes of the viewing public. Nevertheless, the show's legacy lives on, a reminder of a time when the unexplained was a source of fascination and fear, and when the line between reality and the paranormal was blurred. Well, that's going to do it for now. Can you recollect any memorable instances from the TV show sightings? Is there an episode that you hold dear as your favorite? Additionally, given the contemporary cultural context, do you believe a reboot of the show would resonate well with audiences? Please let me know in the comments. I'd really like to hear what you got to say. Thank you so much for joining me on this spine-chilling journey into the world of Dr. Creepy. Remember, when darkness falls, don't forget to check under your bed. Stay tuned for more hair-raising tales and bone-chilling adventures. Until next time, keep your wits about you and your nightlight shining bright. Dr. Creepy. In an effort to document the shadowy presence, the two men started taking pictures, unsure if anything so intangible could be captured on film. I took the picture of the bathroom door over by the bathroom and got this really strange looking thing that was either scary or comical. The first images they captured had distinct eyes, mouth, and body. But then the pictures took an unexpected turn, and the results shocked everyone. They started receiving answers to specific questions.